We now introduce you to the teaching ministry of Pastor Joseph Kansima. Pastor Kansima is a man of God who teaches the Word of God in simplicity but with great impact. Now, when I'm talking this, your mind is moving up and down. You are saying, how am I going to, to build the altar? Am I going to be sacrificing chickens there? What am I going to sacrifice? Now, the word altar and the sacrifice goes beyond what most of us think. When I say build a personal altar, I am simply saying build a place and a time and a level of sacrifice more than where you are now. If your prayer life is 20 minutes a day, and the doctor says, we don't know what is going to happen in five months. What do you do? You come home and say, Lord, I know you answer prayer. I have been praying out of comfort. I have been praying out of uh, the norms. I have been praying when I have time. Lord, now. I'm going to go into sacrificial prayer. I am going to go on the altar of sacrifice in prayer. I have never prayed three hours in tongues straight. I have never prayed for 30 minutes straight. But the doctor says it's a time of life and death. And I'm going to go another on another level. I am going to go into sacrificial prayer. It's an altar of prayer. It is not that you are offering an animal. You are sacrificing your time. You are raising your prayer life to the place of sacrifice instead of the prayer life in the place of comfort and the norm. Many brothers don't understand that. I see Christians who have a sentence of death upon their lives. And they are still praying Roman Catholic prayers. I see men and women whose children are on drugs, whose children are going high wire, whose children are crazy, whose children are sick. They are eating from Monday to Saturday, month end to the beginning of another month. And they simply say, when the child is about to sleep, they go and they pray, Lord, Lord, remember my child. I can assure you that level of prayer may not work. It doesn't mean your child cannot be healed or your child cannot be delivered. You've got to build an altar of prayer. You say, God, every morning, four o'clock, I'm meeting you here. And I'll be on my knees from four o'clock to five o'clock in the morning. I'll be on my knees from four o'clock to six o'clock in the morning. I want to see any devil in the heavenly place on earth and under the sea that can resist the prayer of a righteous man. You go on a level that is what we call sacrificial prayer. It's an altar. It's an altar. Many of us, we miss it there. We miss it there. Check the challenges you have been having. You are not yet on the place of sacrifice. <laughs> there is a lady in the Bible. Her name is Esther. The lady of if I die, I die. That is an altar. She put her life on the line. She tells Mordecai, say, uncle, go and fast. I'm going to fast. Three days, no eating, no drinking. Because this is a moment of life and death. And after we pray and fast, I'm going to put my life online. I'm going to go to the king, which is not allowed. And she went, prayed and fasted, went to the king. To cut the story short, the children of Israel were saved. What if Esther simply continued with the queen type of prayer? 
where she'll be drinking a little bit of wine and the, the maids, they come and say, Queen, is now the evening to pray and she'll in her, in her good dresses and say, Oh God of Abraham, God of Israel, Oh God, we don't know what is going to happen, but you are God. And she takes another glass of wine and drink because she's a queen. She said, I'm a queen, but it's time to put on sackcloths. I'm a queen, but it's time to go without food. Not because there was shortage of food, but she understood it's a place of sacrifice. So when we talk of an altar, we are talking, meeting God on a sacrificial level. Very, very important. Your sickness will bow down. Number two, we're talking about personal consecration to the word of God. Friends, this word has life. The Bible says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. This is a living word. It's a healing word. You are used to only hear the word. I can be used only to hear the word. When I go to church on Sunday and I write notes, probably I come and check the notes uh, after Sunday and that's all I went for. I wait for another Sunday. But the doctor says it is a matter of time you are going. At that time, I'm going to be a build an altar of word intake. The word altar means a place of sacrifice. I'm going to read the Bible not as a norm, but on the sacrificial level. I am sleeping, I go and wash my face. And I say, I'm going to this, to read this word until revelation for healing comes. I'm going to read this word until revelation for my deliverance comes. It is an altar of word intake. Come on. Hope I'm preaching to somebody. Most of us, we are missing it. We are missing it. You see, physics, for those who did physics, if you want to move an object, it is not moving. It doesn't mean, mean it cannot move. You need to calculate the heaviness of this object, and then you calculate the amount of pressure that you have to apply. If you are going to be doing this with your hands, you're going to say it is impossible to move this stone. But when you bring a crater, it applies a higher pressure. The stone that looks like it can never move, it will simply move. Spiritual things are like that. When you do it once, nothing is happening. It doesn't mean it cannot move. You simply need to increase the amount of pressure. Pressure in prayer, pressure in the word. That is a place of personal altar. The doctor said you are going nowhere. You may be dying. Apply higher pressure, but that will require sacrifice. It will require sacrifice. It will require sacrifice. Number three, number three. We're talking about the altars and what to put on the altar. It is what we call the altar of personal consecration to God. You see, some of us are born again. I know we are born again. But we are living this kind of uh, Western civilized Christianity where we, 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 we go to church and the I mean, Monday we can socialize and do everything. We can, if we are, we are, we are stressed a little bit, we take a little uh, uh, wine for the stomach. I mean, we are born again, we are born again, we are born again, we are born again. No, no one can refuse that you are born again. And you are praying in tongues, and you are praying in tongues. Now, that kind of Christianity may not give you the power or the anointing on the level that you need. It may require you to consecrate your life to God more. It may require you to lay your life on the altar and say, God, have me whole. 
There is a time when you make a vow that, Lord, I'm not dying young. And as I'm living, I'm going to be healed. But when I'm healed, I'm going to leave you for you 110%. A personal altar of consecration. Many Christians are scared of consecration. It is in the place of consecration where we meet an encounter with God. When you have an encounter with God, there is a power that comes upon you and begin to break the unbreakable things in your life. Very important. Very important. Most of us, we are born again, but we have never built an altar of personal sacrifice. Listen to this, friends, brothers and sisters, sacrificing your life to God is not easy because there are demands. There are things that you are going to let go that seem normal to other people. The obvious life that many Christians live will not be your life. You draw closer to God. You begin to walk with him. It is a sacrifice. It's a personal altar. Altar number four. It is giving our resources, giving our time in a vow to God. A good example is a name or is a woman by the name of Anna. Anna was barren. And the, the Bible tells me that the husband had two wives. And the other wife of the husband was having children. And so whenever they were moving, she was laughing at Anna. Laughing at her. And she went to the Lord and he did or made a vow on a higher level. And he said, God, if you give me a male child, I will give him back to you. Now, ladies who have children, I want you to go into the time of anointed imagination. Just imagine you have been barren until you are maybe 40, 45 maybe 50, whatever time, I really don't know. And uh, you go to God and say, if you give me a child, I'll give him back to you. And God gives you a child. And you begin to give that child. When the child is about two years, two years, you take the child to the house of God. You take him, let me make it simple. You take him to the pastor. And this pastor it looks like he's a single. He's an old man. The wife died a long time ago. He's an old man, semi-blind, old pastor. You take him to the church, to the church or to the mission house, and you go and leave this two years board with, with boy, the only child you have, the only one. You go and say, God, I asked you for a male child here. You drop the child, and the child begins to cry, Mama, Mama, Mommy, Mommy, Mommy. You walk quickly and leave him. I never go there. The child remains there. You're not talking about a 15-year-old boy. You're talking about a two-year-old boy. Who needs your attention? But because you have reached a point where you say, rather I do this and break barrenness upon my life. And I did that. The good news is that after Samuel, she had other five children, three boys and two girls. But it was on the altar of sacrifice that her womb was open. Listen to me, friends. Many Christians die because they face their challenges on the same normal level of life they live. They want to solve life-threatening situations on the same level where they are. And I am praying it's not going to be so with you. It's a time when you cry in your teeth and say enough is enough. Enough is enough. I am not going to die. Neither am I going to leave my children orphans. It doesn't matter the devil who is in my body. He has to pack his bags and go. I'll pray. I'll read. I'll fast. 
I will consecrate my life to Jehovah God. Friends, when you make such a decision, you are very close to the breakthrough that you are looking for. I want to leave you with this important information. Any object may seem to be immovable. The thing is, the object is not immovable. It is the power or the level of force applied. Apply a higher force. The object is going to move. That cancer in your body may seem like it cannot move. That sickness in your, in your body, it may be tumor, it may be cancer, it may be AIDS, but we can apply a higher force. Even this evening, I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to pray with you. I'm not saying wait for tomorrow. We're going to apply a higher force upon your life. Speak the very life of Jesus Christ. That cancer will dry up by the power of the Holy Spirit. Friends, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. It's the higher force that we apply that makes the difference.